Week six of the fantasy football season. Here's a few wide receivers. I looked at off the wire this week. The first receiver, Darnell Mooney of the Atlanta Falcons. Mooney, he's been a great addition to this Falcon team in the offseason. I mean, Kirk Cousins over the last few weeks have really gotten things going and getting their rapport down. And what a comeback victory for this Atlanta Falcon team on Thursday night in week five. So the last few games for Mooney, week three versus the Chiefs, eight catches, 66 yards, eight targets. Week four versus the Saints, three catches, 56 yards. And week five, he had the blow up game, nine catches, 105 yards and two touchdowns on a whopping 16 targets him and drake london had monster performances for this falcon team in week five week six a good matchup with the carolina panthers where we know their defense can't stop anyone and darnell mooney right now well he's out there 52 percent of fantasy leagues and we know he's got game breaking speed and he's finally playing with a quarterback that can get him the football consistently he's showing off his skill set and he fits falcon offense great so he's definitely a top ad off the wire this week next receiver josh downs of the Indianapolis Colts. So this Colts team, their offense is way better, I believe, in terms of getting the receivers, the football, and making big plays with Joe Flacco in the lineup instead of Anthony Richardson. Obviously, even though if Richardson's healthy and good to go, I believe he's going to be back in the lineup next week. But down to another good ball game in week five. So the last couple weeks, like I said, with Flacco in the lineup week four, coming in early in that one for Richardson. Eight catches, 82 yards, a touchdown, nine targets. And week five at Jacksonville, nine catches, 69 yards on 12 targets. So last season, we saw downs even with Gardner Minshew. We had some big ball games, catching deep balls down the field, making plays, getting targets, getting open. Now, I know it's a tougher matchup at the Titans coming up in week six, where they're one of the better pass defenses in the league. But like I said, Josh Downs, he's got game-breaking ability. Joe Flacco already has a good rapport with some of these wide receivers. And he's a veteran quarterback where he knows to put the football and get it to these guys. So if obviously Flacco stays in, like I said, most of these Indianapolis Colt wide receivers are going to have value this season and the next coming weeks. Next receiver, Alec Pierce of the Indianapolis Colts. He's been one of the better deep ball threats this season in the NFL was Alec Pierce. And he showed it once again in week five where it only took three catches for him to have a monster ball game at the Jacksonville Jaguars. So week three, he didn't do much. A catch, 44 yards, two targets. Week four versus Steel was a catch, nine yards. But then week five, he went off three catches, 134 yards and a touchdown on three targets. So like I said, he's the deep ball threat is Alec Pierce. And he reminds me going back years to go to Devery Henderson, who was with the New Orleans Saints. And he was the deep ball and nothing guy with Drew Brees in that offense. Going back 10 years ago, hey, Alec Pierce, that's the type of role he has, deep ball or nothing. But if you want to take a shot and catch lightning in a bottle, I think Alec Pierce, especially with bye weeks going in full force over the next few weeks here, can help fantasy owners and available in 80% of fantasy leagues is a boom or bust play. And next head's Alan Lazard of the New York Jets. It just seems like Lazard, he finds the end zone and he does drop a bunch of passes as well, but he's found the end zone now. Three out of the last four weeks is Lazard. Week three versus New England, three catches, 48 yards, a touchdown. Week four versus Denver, five catches, 58 yards. And then week five in Minnesota in London, he almost had two touchdowns in that game, but dropped one in the second half, four catches, 34 yards, and a touchdown on 10 targets. Obviously, him and Aaron Rodgers go way back to the Green Bay Packer days for, for multiple years. And Alan Lazard's a decent route runner. The hands got to get a little bit better, obviously, where he's had drop issues over the last couple seasons. But he goes out there and he makes plays, Lazard. And obviously, Rodgers has trust in him where he's starting to get it going with Gary Wilson as well. But right now, Alan Lazard, while he's still out there, surprisingly, in 64% of fantasy leagues, not the flashiest of wide receivers, but he's getting the job done. And he's an ad this week. The next wide receiver, Jordan Whittington of the Los Angeles Rams. So Whittington, I know he got banged up at the end of that ball game in the fourth quarter versus the Green Bay Packers. But we'll see if he returns in week seven where they're going on by. And obviously Cooper Cup's coming back as well, but obviously Puka Nakua is still going to be out a few more weeks for this Ram team. But Jordan Whittington, the last two weeks, he's gone out there and played well. Week four at the best, six catches, 62 yards. And week five versus the Packers, seven catches, 89 yards. On 10 targets, he was playing the Cooper Cup snaps in the slot with Whittington the last couple weeks. And he's actually been pretty decent as Whittington. He had a lot of hype coming out of preseason and training camp. Sean McVay putting him over was the six-round pick. And last week, once again, he had a solid ball game. Like I said, I know they're going on by and Cooper Cup reports are coming out. Most likely coming back in week seven. But Whittington is someone you don't have to put fab money on, I believe. Or use a high waiver claim to get him with the bye week coming up and Cup coming back. Someone I would take a flyer on. 
And like I said, he's available in tons of leagues at 85%. This receiver looked at to Jalen Tolbert of the Dallas Cowboys. Now with Brandon Cooks out four weeks, Jalen Tolbert's going to step in to expanded role. And we saw some flashes early in the season, but now with Cooks out, we saw last week at the Pittsburgh Steelers, he went out there, had a big ball game, including a game-winning touchdown with 20 seconds left in the fourth quarter. So the last few weeks for Tolbert, week two versus New Orleans, six catches, 82 yards, nine targets. Week three versus Baltimore, three catches, 42 yards, a touchdown, five targets. Week four at the Giants, three catches, 24 yards. And week five at Pittsburgh, the big ball game, seven catches, 87 yards. And the game-winning touchdown on 10 targets at Tolbert. He could run the route. He got a lot of first-team reps in training camp when C.D. Wham held out the whole training camp for the Dallas Cowboys and it's definitely paid off so now like I said even if Brandon Cooks comes back in the four weeks I think Tolbert turned the spot to be in the starting lineup him and Dak have a good rapport and the Cowboys were looking for a third option in this passing game to emerge behind C.D. Wham and Jake Ferguson and I think Jalen Tolbert has after coming off a big game and three games in the first five with double digit fantasy points this season in PPR leagues and he's available 93% of fantasy leagues and the final receiver I looked at off the wall is Darius Slayton of the New York Giants. Darius Slayton, he has these type of pop games here and there and I know Malik Neighbors was out and he played in the role of Neighbors in this one at the Seahawks in week five. Eight catches, 122 yards and a touchdown on 11 targets. So if Neighbors is out once again this week, Darius Slayton could be a deep add in deeper leagues available 97% of fantasy leagues and they got a pretty decent matchup coming up versus Cincinnati Bengals where we've seen teams go up and down the field on them all season long so I think Darius Slayton if Malik Neighbors is out once again what a concussion could be a deeper league ad so that's a few wide receivers I looked at off the wire for week six of the fantasy football season